Welcome back. We all like taking photos and there are certain settings on our camera that can help us take better photos. One of those settings is white balance. Today that's what we're going to talk about. Now white balance on your camera is one of the settings that can help you get the colors in your image right. If you're shooting in JPEG, white balance settings are very important. But if you're shooting in RAW, they are just as important in my view because it allows you to see what the final image can look like. When we're shooting in JPEG, what we see on the LCD is the final product. When we're shooting in RAW, what we're seeing on the LCD screen once we've taken the photo is what the photo could look like once you've edited because everything that you've set up in your camera, your picture profile, your white balance setting and so on is displayed on the LCD has a JPEG thumbnail. This thumbnail is not saved but this data is recorded in your EXIF file. So when you go in to edit your photo you could say for the white balance has shot and it will record the settings that you recorded. So if you shot in auto white balance you go oh, well you shot in auto. If you shot in cloudy white balance it'll say okay well you use the cloudy profile. It's very easy to get a starting point when you're editing your photos in RAW. But if you're shooting in JPEG your white balance is one of these settings that is very hard to correct once you've shot the image. Especially if you're trying to manipulate that image in a photo editing program because you've got a very narrow margin that you can adjust your white balance. Normally if you get your white balance wrong that's it. You just have to put up with it. Let's take a look at what the white balance settings are and when to use these whether you shoot in JPEG or in RAW. Now the first one is auto. We have two auto white balance settings in the Z lineup of the Nikon cameras. We have general auto and then we have natural light auto. Let's look at the general auto first where we have auto zero and it says keep white, reduce warm colors. If you're using auto and you're looking like well it's a little bit too warm let's reduce it. Then we have auto one, keep overall atmosphere, keep the overall atmosphere of what it looks like. If it looks very warm keep it that way. If it looks very cool keep it that way. You have to understand that when it's on auto it really depends on the scene that you're photographing of what the auto setting will be. If you're photographing at sunset it will be very warm. If you're photographing at night it will be less warm because it's trying to judge what the colors are that you're trying to photograph. Then we have auto two, keep warm lighting colors. Now you can see on the screen here I'm using auto one has my reference point for all these photos. Auto one will always be on the left and the other settings auto zero, auto two and so on will be on the right to give you a reference point of how the white balance changes between all of these white balance settings. And this is the same way that I showed the different picture profiles that you can use on your Nikon Z cameras and I'll put a link up here now if you want to watch this video after this one of course. These are the three auto profiles. The next one is natural light auto and this is the setting that I use 99% of the time during the day especially if I'm photographing wildlife because I found that it is slightly different to auto. It seems to be more stable, it doesn't fluctuate too much and it gives me the bird colors exactly the way I like it. When I come home and start editing my wildlife photos very rarely will I have to adjust my white balance setting. I might have to adjust the exposure, the highlights and all that but white balance I'll just click has shot, bang that's it. It's a one stop shop. The Nikon Z cameras are so good at getting the white balance settings correct. After natural light auto we have direct sunlight. White balance I should mention is rated in kelvins and on your Nikon Z cameras the minimum is 2500 kelvins, the maximum is 10,000. 10,000 would look very warm, 2500 will look very cool. So direct sunlight is middle of the road around 5000 and it gives you a very good starting point when you're shooting during the day. You might think why do I really want to be adjusting my white balance? Well sometimes when you go out you might say like oh I just want a bit of warmth. 
especially in winter because winter is a very cool time of the year so you're photographing and landscaping you're like well it's a bit drab how can I add just that extra warmth fairly quickly especially if you're shooting JPEG well you do that by using your white balance settings so the next one here is cloudy look at the difference between auto and cloudy then we have shade which makes it even warmer and this is so good when especially in the middle of the day the colors the light is very flat and you're like well I just like to add some warmth click it to shade and bang now you might think like well Charles you're a professional photographer why are you talking about JPEGs when you shoot 90% of the time in RAW well when I go on holidays with my family I will shoot JPEG and RAW I might take a couple of thousand photos while we're traveling around and in a couple of weeks time we're going to northern New South Wales it's autumn we're hoping to see all the maple trees in the, their golden colors because they're going to leave their leaves are going to drop off soon I'm not going to edit thousands of photos this is why I shoot JPEG and RAW when I come home I'll look through them all and I might select maybe 10 20 photos of my family saying like yep I like these I'll spend a bit more time editing the rest of them maybe a hundred or so photos that we decide to share to social media and you're like I'm just going to use the JPEGs because I've gotten it right in camera I've gotten the white balance right I've gotten the picture profile right there's no need for me to edit save it for Facebook and that's it my job is done instead of warm look at incandescent we're going all the way to the other side of the field now we're going very blue incandescent you could use it at night time because it's very cool then we have fluorescent and fluorescent is a great white balance setting if you're shooting indoors especially with fluoros because that's what fluorescent is when you have fluoros 90 percent of the lights these days are fluorescent some are warm some are much cooler fluorescent is the profile to use if you're shooting indoors and there are many profiles in fluorescent here in Australia I like using fluorescent number four it gives me the correct setting I took a picture last night of our kitchen on the left is auto can you see it's very warm but look on the right I've used fluorescent number four and it gave me the correct color no need to adjust my white balance it's right on the money then we have flash I rarely use a flash gun but if you are using a flash then use the flash and it gives you the correct setting then we have the last one which is K K is choose your color temperature so it's up to you and this is a setting that I often use when I'm photographing the Milky Way because I like getting my white balance right in camera why would you just leave it on auto and all you're looking is a very warm screen and you go like yeah that looks good well you know that your frame looks good but what would it look like when you've set your right white balance setting my white balance setting that I like using is between 3700 and 4000 kelvins depending where I am on the left is natural light auto and on the right I've used manual white balance set to 3700 can you see how much cooler and it looks so much more natural this is why I tell people your camera is your tool use it to help you get better photos in camera so you spend less time editing your photos who wants to sit down and edit five six hundred photos I don't so I use picture profiles I use white balance settings to get me the pictures that I want so that when I come home I have less editing to do doesn't that sound like simple make your job easier use the camera to get better photos if you like the video give it a big thumbs up stay safe enjoy photography and I'll see you next time